Hello, my name is Kert Lazic and this is the first session in a series of short videos about academic writing. Since this is the very first one, we'll be asking the big question, what is academic writing? And we'll be looking at it from four different perspectives to discuss how that shapes the way how we position ourselves as writers in the academia. The first truth about academic writing is that it's a skill. What this ultimately means is that it's not just a set of information that you gather so that you would have a lot of knowledge about it. That kind of knowledge is useless if you can't put it into practice. That means that you need to practice. It's, um, it's uh, the same as it would be with any other kind of um, skill. Swimming. You wouldn't expect to be a good swimmer just by reading a lot of books about how to position your body when you get into the water. Instead, you would have to get into the water and make it work. You might feel like drowning at times, but if you get back to it and you start over again, you will, by the end of it, manage to stay afloat and even move ahead. It's the same with academic writing. You have to practice. That comes with a sense of responsibility. You can't just pick it up like that. You will have to get your nose into it and work hard. At the same time, you have to realize that this comes with a sense of hope. You see, if it is polishable, if you can work on it, if it is not something that you're supposed to be born with, but you can develop it in your life, then it means that even if you can't master it just right away, if you work hard on it, you will get there. The second point that we are looking at is that good writing is a cultural construct. Now this might sound a little fancy and overly philosophical, but you'll see why it's important in just a second. For example, if we take the general characteristics of what is considered good academic writing, then people from all across the world through different disciplines would all probably agree that these quali qualifications apply. It has to have clarity and brevity, it's expected to have a certain level of formality. It should be objective and all the claims that you make should be supported by evidence or examples. Everybody agrees. The complication happens when you try to define exactly what each individual in each different context means by those terms. Clarity and brevity can differ from location to location. And thus, we have to talk about different traditions of writing within academic writing. Being aware of that is crucial if you want to make sure that you are producing texts that are fit for the context in which you're writing. So, for example, it might happen that you are writing in something that is called reader-responsible tradition. That ultimately means that the person who is responsible for the text working well, for the text to be understood, is the reader. It means that the writer with their competence and expertise can create a text and it's the responsibility of the reader to make sure that they have enough background information, that they can follow the thoughts, that they can create the connections between different ideas. If it doesn't work, who's to blame? The reader. There is another tradition, and that is called the writer-responsible tradition. And it needs to be noted that the Anglo-American tradition of writing usually opts for the writer-responsible. This means that if the text doesn't work, if the reader cannot understand, if an idea seems disjointed, if something is not flowing smoothly, it's the responsibility of the writer, and they are to blame if it doesn't work. That means that it's the job of the writer, not the reader, to work on it, making sure that tra transitions are smooth and the reader is picked up from one end of the text and carried smoothly without any gaps, any hiccups to the end of the text, proving a point. That is just one of the examples of how it's a cultural construct. And the strange thing about it is that these local varieties can occur anywhere through different levels of academia. We can talk about um, a specific local variety in a certain discipline. Thus, writing in the field of chemistry actually comes with a slightly different understanding of what academic writing is than, let's say, writing in theology. At the same time, these local varieties can be boiled down to a specific university, a specific department, and even a specific lecturer.
because each of us approach academic writing from a slightly different perspective. So if you want to be successful in your writing, you would study the context into which you're writing, instead of assuming that when I say academic writing and you say academic writing, we're necessarily right on the same page. The third aspect that we need to really acknowledge when we talk about academic writing is that it is much wider as a process than just putting words on paper. You could even call it a kind of thinking about the world. And it involves different aspects. It starts from as far along the road as the questions we ask. Let's be honest, in academic writing there are certain questions that are silly. They are silly because we as researchers haven't done our background work, we haven't checked the context into which we are speaking, and we haven't informed ourselves just yet enough to know that we're asking a smart, tested, precise question. So, academic thinking actually starts from asking the right questions. You can't start writing before you've made sure that the question that you ask is really precise. Paradoxically, if you ask the right kind of question for the type of paper that you're supposed to write, it actually, in a strange way, writes half of the paper for you. If the question is right, everything else clicks into place naturally right after that in the process. After you have your question, the next thing you need to think about before you start writing is the methods that you use. In academia, we accept tested, vetted, really scrutinized methods. You can't just randomly go about discussing things. There's supposed to be structure and a system and preferably something that has been tried out before. Thirdly, you would need to think about the types of sources that you can actually rely on in your argumentation. That means that not everything goes. Even Wikipedia is fine for just reading and fine for the list of references, but let's be honest, don't use it as something that you really need to lean on in your arguments. Next, academia defines the type of evidence that counts as solid and good evidence in your writing. You're supposed to think about that as well. And then it defines the kinds of conclusions that you can draw. Not every leap from the data to the conclusions is valid in academia. You need to know how to move from the um, ideas that you've presented to the things that it can actually imply without leaving any gaps or without making any mistakes. And finally, when you now get to the act of actually putting words on paper or on your screen, Academic writing conventions also define the way that you express everything that you've just thought about. Thus, academic writing is a much wider scheme than just the act of typing or scratching with your pen on paper. It's also wonderful that academic writing as a kind of thinking will end up shaping much more than the papers that you write. You will discover that you um, as you progress in understanding academic writing and the processes, the way that you see the world in general will slightly shift towards those patterns. It means that afterwards, when you're looking at the news, or when you're reading newspapers, or even when you're having a random conversation with your friends over a cup of coffee, you will be scrutinizing the way that they make arguments in a slightly more informed way. You will be filtering the material that you really take in with a more critical eye. And you might find that in your own expression of ideas, you will have gained in clarity, conciseness and structure. It's going to make you a better thinker. Lastly, writing is a nuanced balancing act. It comes with the fact that it always comes with two polarized opposites. In, in academic writing, you're supposed to balance between creativity and critical thinking. You will always be invited to, make, um, to bring something new to the table, to have a fresh angle on things. So it comes with a sense of expectation, expectation on innovation. At the same time, you're always expected to play it by the rules of the tradition, which might feel like it's holding you back, Whereas, in fact, it guarantees that the new aspects that you bring to the table are vetted and tested. 
On the other hand, we can talk about individuality versus convention. You, as a writer in the academia, will be a unique individual with your own angle and your own flavour of writing. But this needs to now be expressed within the confines of the convention. That means that you can think about it as a metaphor of dancing. If you want to attend a ballroom dancing competition, you would be expected to come up with a routine for, let's say, Viennese waltz. If you want to really be successful in that category, you will take the rules and the steps and the rhythm and the kinds of motives that you create from the tradition of Viennese waltz, but you will make a routine that is uniquely yours. Academic writing is just that. It is an adorably messy process of thinking and expressing yourself in a certain kind of a framework within the confines of tradition. That comes with two layers. First of all, you can see it as a chance of taking a tradition and creating something new. On the other hand, if you're the type of a person who feels like, I don't know if I can do it just yet, don't worry. The tradition provides you with a safe scaffolding that will make sure that you can create something that's of worth. Good luck.